As Michael mentioned, my presentation today is on a new model for local government in the Australian Federation, uh, what could be called virtual local government, um, which already exists in many parts of America where it's proven to be very popular. Now, as this slide shows, local government does more than rates, roads and rubbish. It's also involved in planning and development, uh, recreation facilities such as swimming pools, libraries, community centres, bus shelters, parks and gardens and, uh, and a myriad of activities. <clears throat> Based on population, Australian municipalities are amongst the largest in the world, which may come as a surprise to some of you. Take this chart. The average size of our local government body in Australia is about 40,000 people, whereas the average size of a local government unit in the United States and Europe is less than 8,000 people. But based on spending to GDP, gross domestic product, local government in Australia is the poorest in the developed world. As you can see in this chart, local government's share of GDP is only about 2% in Australia, compared to 8 to 15% in all other developed regions of the world. Those who advocate council mergers often claim that there are economies of scale in being bigger. Yet, I'll stay on that slide, yet there is little relationship between council size and its cost per resident, as this chart for Sydney Metropolitan Councils show. Indeed, those hoping that bigger councils will uh, deliver lower rates should have a good look at this chart, which, as you can see, shows you'll get what you want. If you want a bigger council, you can expect to pay higher rates. That's the nature of bureaucracies. The Lakewood Council model, uh, in my view, should be adopted by not just Sydney councils, but uh, councils uh, throughout Australia. The most efficient councils in the world are based on the US Lakewood County model, which has been around for about 60 years, of staying small to ensure local needs are properly met, while outsourcing services to specialist providers or shared service centres to obtain economies of scale and scope. Now, in truth, uh, some council activities do benefit from scale, but others don't. For instance, routine processing, such as rate notices and paying invoices, uh, certainly benefit from scale. But on the other hand, case-by-case uh, -case determination, such as local environment plans, approving new traffic signs and so forth, require local place management and can be done better on a smaller scale. The information revolution, unlike the industrial revolution, requires speed, not size. Amalgamating councils into monolithic behemoths won't encourage flexibility and agility, nor will it solve the twin problems of local government today, which are principally uh, prolonged underfunding of essential infrastructure assets. There is a massive infrastructure backlog in most councils. And the other one is a dysfunctional planning and development approval process that has been completely corrupted by politics. In other words, um, making already bigger councils, big councils, bigger won't necessarily expect expedite public works uh, nor expedite development approvals. An alternative to amalgamation is a two-part legal structure for regional governments. I'll illustrate it with this chart here. First of all, a regional council of mayors, um, as you can see, I don't know if I can get this up, in the very top box, uh, a regional council of mayors constituted as a county council to conduct regional advocacy and lobbying and to engage with the state government in regional growth planning and relevant decisions. And I'll also talk about a regional planning body, as we have in New South Wales, that would also be responsible to this body. Secondly, a regional shared service centre, which is the green box in the middle, which would be a company limited by guarantee, governed by a board of council general managers, those who belong to the shared service centre, to provide shared services to the member councils. 
and also to service the uh, Regional Council of Mayors, the Joint Regional Panel uh, Planning Panel, which would be an independent panel accountable to the Regional uh, Council of Mayors, and of course other prospective clients, some of whom might be state clients and even private clients, as we've seen happen with the Hunter Regional Shared Service Centre in New South Wales. A new governance structure for uh, local government would particularly address shared services, as I mentioned, and development planning, starting with shared services. The first step would be to merge the administrative functions of neighbouring councils that would benefit from economies of scale and scope into a linked shared services centre that would be run as a commercial cooperative by member councils, as I showed in the previous chart, with their board of directors from their general managers. As a cooperative, the SSC, the Shared Service Centre, would pay a dividend to each council member commensurate with the value of services sold, um, similar to the cooperative bookshop, which is the country's largest cooperative. When you buy a book from them, uh, and if you're a member, you, you get your annual dividend. Next, take uh, development planning. <coughs> Again, I'll show a chart. The Regional Council of Mayors uh, would appoint a joint regional planning panel, uh, which you can see in the lower uh, left-hand uh, chart, the blue box there, uh, and um, uh, that would decide the development applications at a, at a regional level. They'd be projects of regional significance, and we already have this structure to some extent in New South Wales. Each council would appoint its own independent local planning panel to decide all development applications of local significance in accordance with the council's planning and development policies. And there are also some examples of that in New South Wales and I'm sure in other parts of Australia. The Shared Service Centre would have an ongoing mandate to provide professional staff to assist with both the local and regional planning panels on a fee-for-service basis. Now, I'll go to the next chart as well. After, say, five years, each council would be given the discretion to buy services from any provider, public, not-for-profit or private. Uh, shifting business uh, to an alternative provider would mean a council would forfeit its uh, cooperative dividends. Nevertheless, such a sunset clause would put the shared service centre on notice that unless it performed efficiently and effectively, it could expect to lose customers once its exclusive contract expired. Where a community wanted a smaller council for better place management, of its services and infrastructure, such a contract model would allow municipal councils to splinter along precinct lines without sacrificing economies of scale and scope because much of their work would be done by shared services. Um, I've never really quite understood the amalgamation movement. People are passionate about their local councils. The issue is about administration. You could merge their back offices and form shared service centres, as is happening at the state level in New South Wales. We've got two or three shared service centres working for many departments. I don't know why it's not being done at local government level. It would help depoliticise this a great deal, and it would move towards, uh, I think, a new form of federalism, as, at least as far as local government's concerned. Thanks very much for your attention.